everyone! Today we're going to be going over how to do the lemon peel stitch in crochet. For this tutorial I was using this Pound of Love skein by Lion Brand Yarn in the color pastel green as well as a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is also the same stitch that I am doing for my temperature blanket. We're going to go ahead and get started with a slip knot which you can do however is easiest for you. And then for the lemon peel stitch, we want to make sure that we have an even number of stitches. So we're going to go ahead and get started with an odd number of chains. So I'm going to chain 31, uh, but you can chain however long as you need your finished project to be, just making sure that it's an odd number of chains. Alright, so once you have the number of chains that you need or that you want for your project, we're going to go ahead and get started on the stitches. So I'm going to be skipping this first chain from the hook and working into the second chain, and I'm going to work into it with a single crochet. So just in case you need a refresher on single crochet, we're going to insert our hook into the chain. We're going to pull up the yarn that's in the back there. So now we have two loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through both of those loops. And then in this next chain here, we're going to work a double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the chain, pull up a loop from the yarn that's in the back, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then in the following chain, we're going to work another single crochet. So we're going to insert into the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to follow that up with a double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just going to complete that until we reach the end of our chain. So it's always going to be a single crochet followed by a double crochet. So if you want to keep doing that, and then I'll meet you when we're near the end of our chain. All right, so we're in the last couple of chains here. So we're gonna work the last two stitches together. So first we're going to work a single crochet. And then we're going to end on a double crochet. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So for each round, you're going to be ending on a double crochet. So if you did not end on a double crochet, that's just a sign to you to maybe look back, see if maybe you did two single crochets in a row or two double crochets in a row, or maybe to see if you dropped a stitch somewhere, uh, because you should always be ending on a double crochet. So if you're not, that's just a sign to you that you made a mistake somewhere in your row. So in order to start on the second row, I'm going to go ahead and chain one, and then I'm going to turn my work. So starting on the second round here, we've chained one and turned, and now I'm going to do a single crochet into this first stitch here. So where we ended on a double crochet, we're now working a single crochet into that stitch. So I'm going to insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then in the next one, I'm going to go ahead and work a double crochet. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then in the next one, I'm going to work that single crochet again. So insert my hook, pull up a loop from the yarn in the back, yarn over, pull through two, and then I'm going to be working a double crochet. 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So just like the first round, we're going to be doing single, double, single, double until we get to the end again. And I'll once again meet you at the end of this row. So we're at the last two stitches for this second round here, the second row. So I'm going to do a single crochet into this stitch here. So I'm going to insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then we have the last stitch here that I'm going to work a double crochet into. So I'm going to yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. And you can see here that my project is uh, sort of twisting around a little here, but the more rounds that I do, the more rows that I do, it will uh, straighten out and it won't be twisting as much anymore. So I'm going to chain one in order to turn and then turn my warp. And I find maybe the, the first round, the first row, may be the most difficult because you're not able to differentiate the stitches that you're working into but I find the more rows that you've done the easier it is to see what kind of stitch you're working into so you can see that this one this one here has the post this stitch so that is a double crochet so I know that if I'm working into that stitch I'm going to be putting a single crochet into that whereas the one next to it does not have any sort of post it's much shorter so I know that that is a single crochet that I'm working into and it's going to have a double crochet that I'm going to have to work into it so it's just something that also can help you as you continue to work to see uh, maybe you're not sure if you're supposed to be working a single or a double crochet maybe you lost count and you stopped paying attention but if you look at the row that is beneath you you can see if it has this post you're going to work a single crochet into it and if it doesn't have a post you're going to be working a double crochet into it so let's get started on this second round here so this is a double crochet that we just worked in we just worked in the last round so we're going to be working a single crochet into that stitch so insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then this one we're going to be working that double crochet into yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and just like we did for the first two rounds we're just going to be working single double single double until we get to the end so if you want to keep doing that and then I'll meet you at the last couple stitches once more. All right, so in the last two stitches for this row, so this one has the post here, so we're going to be working a single crochet into that, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then a double crochet into the last stitch here, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So once again, just like we did, if you were here for any of the basic stitch tutorials, so like single, double, half double crochet, if you find that you're still not ending on that double crochet and that you're actually losing stitches in each row, you can always use a stitch marker if you need it in order to make sure that you're not dropping any stitches. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to see the stitches at the end of a row especially. So when you do that, when you do the chain one, and then you work the first stitch in for the next row, which in this case would of course be a single crochet, insert, pull up 
pull up a loop yarn over pull through two you can go ahead and grab a stitch marker or a safety pin and you can insert it insert it in here and that'll just help you make sure if in case you're losing any stitches at the beginning or the end of each round that you are working into that stitch so it's just going to continue for each round single double single double for an even number of stitches until you get to the end and because you're always working a double into a single and vice versa it makes it about the the height of a half double crochet which is another reason why it's so perfect for temperature blankets uh, because a lot a lot of times if you use certain stitches for temperature blankets you can find that you're going to end up with a very long blanket if it needs anywhere from of course 365 to 366 rows for the year so if you want to make sure that you have a blanket for a temperature blanket that is not super long this is a great option because again it's going to be about the height of a half double crochet stitch so I'm just going to keep going until I get to a desired length for my project. If you need to go back, you can use the timestamps below in order to uh, ensure that you're doing the stitch correctly if you have any questions. But if not, I'm going to meet you once again near the end of my project. So I'm about to start what's going to be the last row for my project here. You can see now that we've worked up more rows of the stitch, the texture of the stitch, which looks like a lemon peel. So we can go ahead and get started on this last row here. So we're going to start again with a single crochet and then a double crochet. And like I said earlier, as it gets easier to see the texture, the more rows that you have, it's also easier to differentiate between the stitches that you're working into, at least that's what I think. So you can see here, because this one has the post here and it's jutting up to make that texture, that that's a double crochet. So we're going to want to work a single crochet into that. And this one here is a much shorter stitch. It doesn't have a post like that double crochet did. So we're going to want to work a double crochet into that. So if you find that you're not sure if you're supposed to work a single or double crochet again, you can just look for that post. For me, especially if I am crocheting while I'm doing something else, like watching a TV show or something like that, because I do so many double crochet projects, it's kind of second nature for me to just keep going with a double crochet. So it's really easy for me to just look down at the stitch below to determine which one I need. So single, followed by a double, followed by a single. And then again as well, if you want to use this for a blanket, like we were talking about a temperature blanket, and you want just some more ideas on how many you need to chain in order to get the desired length. I think the easiest thing to do is, of course, to just use, if you want to have the blanket on a bed, just chain until you get to the desired length for the bed. So you just want to make sure that you have that desired length, but you have an odd number of chains so that you can have an even number of stitches. So I'm just going to keep going until I get to the end of this row here, and I'll meet you there. All right, so we're at the last two stitches again. So this is a double crochet beneath us, so we're gonna be working a single crochet. And then the last stitch here is a single crochet beneath us, so we're gonna be working a double crochet. And then I'm just going to chain one. I'm going to grab my scissors. I'm gonna cut here. And then I'm going to pull my hook up and pull tight. So as always, you can knot here if you wanna be more secure. 
and then you would just want to work in the ends at either the beginning and the end back into the project so that they're no longer visible. This is our finished project. Please let me know as always if you have any questions in the comments down below or if there are any tutorials or stitches that you'd like to see for the future. Thank you.